Welcome to today's Swarf and Chips. We're here live at Mac 2018. It is day two, and here on the set, Paul and I are joined by the managing director, Steve Finn of DMG Murray. Welcome to the set. Good afternoon, nice Lindsay. Good afternoon, Paul. <laughs> so, yesterday, Monday, how was it? It was great. It was a good start. Um, Mondays are always traditionally a little bit quiet. Mm -hmm. um, we had some good people through the stand. It's a great day to come and see us because uh, we can spend more time with people. But it was a great start to the week. How do you find the new layout? Um, I personally think it's great because it uh, it's a good opportunity for the smaller companies that support a lot of our investment, um, tooling, CAD CAM, those kind of things to be seen as well. And I think that's good for the customers so they can have a better experience walking through. I've got to say, your stand is very impressive. We were on it this morning. And what was quite nice about it is you had room. You had room on the stand to almost take a step back and have a look at what you're not. It wasn't overcrowded, there's, was there's it? No, there's no clutter, is there? It's, it's no. been laid out very well. It's very clean, clean lines, because we've got a good story to tell. And we need to talk to people when they're in front of the machines. What's that story? Well, it's about the solution. It's about the application. It's about all the things that you can do with the machine very much as similar as a lot of people do in there, but we've got the latest technology. You know, we've got over a thousand R&D staff now. So wow. you can imagine the amount of technology that's coming through our company. And you said earlier to myself on the video that you had 82 staff members, 82 staff members on the stand. Why? 82 people to look after the customers. So they're all directly involved with showing the customer our products, listening to the customer about his application needs, um, that's what you need for a company of our size. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the technology because that's what people come here to see. Mm. Uh, certainly from going around the stand today, one of the things that impressed me was the, the DMU 80 FD with the grinding. Can you tell us about that and why you're demonstrating grinding on that machine? A lot more people want to do complete machining, for sure. Um, grinding on that machine is relatively easy to control from the point of view of the, uh, the swarf, the dust extraction. Uh, and that kind of thing, and keeping the machine fit for purpose. So it's, it's very important. I think that you went through the technical aspects with, with my uh, product manager on there. Um, so there is some great opportunities for... And that video is now machine. live actually on our channel that I did yeah. with, with Neil Stewart. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a he hell of a big tool in there as well, though, isn't there? A hell of a big component as well. Well, it's very interesting because the, uh, the, the component is quite high, the tool is quite long, and if you add the two up, it exceeds the Z-axis travel. But the way that you can bring the tool internally into five axes and manoeuvre it into the, into the bore itself is quite clever. And therefore you can then start getting right down to the bottom of, of compo long components. Mm. So it's not just, I mean, you've spoken about one machine, but what you really pride yourselves on is the breadth of machinery, who you're appealing to. Why is this? Yeah, I mean, we can't just supply a certain type of machine. We've got 21 factories out there manufacturing all sorts of machines. And we haven't got all of our machines on the stand. Mm. Um, but we can actually supply, I keep telling people, simple two axis, three axis machines, which we're supporting the MTA stand on the educational zone with, and we support the UK skills team with, um, right through to multi axis machines, laser machines. Um, ultrasonics uh, and the whole thing goes on and on and on. And that's very interesting. One of the machines that I looked at again uh, with Neil was the CMX50, the five axis, three plus two. Uh, it was described as a, a, a classic job shop machine. So it shows that you can go in at that entry level. But the spec of the machine was incredible for what was classed as an entry level machine. It had thermal compensation and all kinds of uh, yeah, Technology. equipment with the machine. You have to have that. I mean, you can't just develop a five axis machine and expect it to work in five axis. You have to understand volumetric accuracy. You have to understand where your tool is at any given time. And therefore, you have to control the machine's thermal activity as well as positional activity. And that, that's really important with five axis. And I thought that was a really good video. In fact, that one's live on the channel as well now uh, with me talking to Neil about the CMX machine. Um, go on. We've got so many questions to fire <laughs> at you, sorry. <laughs> no, I know, no, we're limited. Um, now, we are going to do a cycle time challenge, but not yet, so keep watching. And Paul, you did that. But financing machines as well, you do something quite unique in the industry, don't you? Yeah, we're, we're financing it from practically what is our own book. 
Um, so we look at financing from a very different perspective of how we can grow customers, how we can encourage manufacturing. Uh, and not being disrespectful to banks, but they will, they will host a whole uh, range of industries and companies. Mm. Um, our company yes. just specialises in the supply of finance for machine tools. Therefore, we can look at customers in a very different way and give them a different, very different support. And, and we can take it down to hourly costs. So the, the small vertical that we do, that, that, that circa, say, around about £110,000, by the time we bundle that all together, we can work that out at £6 an hour. Very competitive. That's more than you get paid. Well, yes, it, well, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> minimum wage. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what about the most popular machine that's been uh, been sort of received by the public? Um, in well, the there's, last there's, there's three machines that keep coming to the top. Um, the Evo 60, um, is a very dynamic, agile machine. Again, very highly accurate machine, very, very capable. This year we've put the PH150 on it, so we have a pallet system feeding in, giving us automation. And behind that is the DMU50, which again is the, the smaller model, um, again with the PH150 for automation. So that's been very attractive. But we've also seen quite a lot of interest in the NLX2500 SY, which is our traditional turning machine, but this time we've brought it with a gantry loader on. So again, automation, so that's that's really been popular. That that, that automation element mm. is, is key, because I know Joe, there's a video as well of the, uh, it's the, it's the NLX, isn't it? Did you yes. say, yeah, uh, Joe did a video on that this morning yeah. with the automation, but I also looked at the Evo again, the 60 Evo, and, to and talked to Neil about the linear drive motors, the speed of the machine, but also the pallet loader on as well. So those videos are live on the channel at the moment as well. Yeah. Um, a couple of other things I, I was gonna ask you, um, Steve, Lindsay mentioned the finance. 40% of five axis machines, here's a statement for you that I heard today, 40% of five axis machines yeah, we, in the UK we, market. We currently Mori. have 40% of UK market in five axis machines. And that, that tells you a story about mm. how big the product range is, what we can supply to many, many different types of industries and different applications. And that doesn't include the five axis mill turn type machines. This, this is basically on machining centre type work. Um, so this is a is a great you know accolade for us to to talk about, but it shows the strength and the depth of knowledge that we have in five axes. There was also one of the sorry to show thirty six <laughs> month warranty on your spindles. Yes. yes. Yeah. That, that's yeah. new. It's it's new. Um, confident. You know, very confident because um, this was something we've seen come in the past where it's come from sort of one year to eighteen months and going up. Um, we're building the spindles. We have control of it. We have control of new materials within the spindles. And um, it shows a level of confidence. This is the, the part of the product that is vitally important. On one hand, it's ripping the material off in high volume, and then you're asking it to repeat within a few microns. So it's a highly you know, integral part of the machine tool that's got to work. Mm. Steve, we're on day two. We've got a few more days to go. Why visit DMG Mori? Well, again, we've just got a whole width of product. We can supply to most companies really what their needs are. We've got several companies that have given us preferred status. So they come to one-stop shopping with us and they know that we can pull something from the company uh, somewhere to actually support their manufacturing. Perfect. I think from, uh, uh, from apprentices and those sort of things, we've got our own apprentices on the stand, as you know, yeah. showing the people the machines, understanding what they're doing uh, and building on that. Yeah. You got any more questions? I, I have loads, but we, we need to move on. <laughs> we, I mean, well, I know you were going to ask about the additive because that's been a big part as well. But yeah. Lindsay can then. Yeah, yeah, well, we did a video or, um, with Marcus Bowen about your additive manufacturing, and I've got to say, some of the parts that you I can't call it make build 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 now are astonishing. So they, you know, just to come to Mac and see some of those parts, you will be astonished. They they are really really impressive. Mm. So you have a cycle time challenge, don't you, Paul? We did. We did a cycle time challenge earlier it's for for the audience, for the viewers to uh, to guess the cycle time in the challenge coming up. But uh, in the meantime, Steve, thank you for thank today. Thank you so much, Lindsay, Paul. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And make sure you're putting your guess for the cycle time challenge in the comment box below. Good luck. Cycle time challenge. So what we're going to do today is a cycle time challenge and it's all to do with additive manufacturing here at Mac 2018 on the DMG Mori stand. And what I'm going to do is whet your appetite first with some of these parts and tell you how long they take to, um, to, to make. 
and then we're going to finish a, a component where you're going to have to guess and stand a chance of winning the Swarf and Chips goodie bag. So if we start, for example, and I could, couldn't even begin to tell you exactly what these components are, but you're looking at this part, can print the, the materials in Canal. You're talking about a cycle time of 28 hours to print that. Pretty impressive. Uh, very impressive indeed, in fact. As we move further down here, we've got this particular part here, which is a padlock fixture. Now, this is made on the LaserTech 30 SLM, and this is actually a cycle time of 14 hours. So now you might be getting a bit of an understanding for how long these things take before we get to the one we're going to challenge you with. The third part is this one. Nice to see they've got them secured here because they do look pretty uh, tasty parts. This is a, a base body for a powder nozzle, uh, and this takes 56 hours and the material is aluminium. So this one here is the one we're going to challenge you on. So for this cycle time challenge today, this is actually made on a LaserTech 30 SLM. Uh, the material is aluminium. I want to know how long this takes to print. How long does it take to make this? Uh, it's an air intake and uh, I've got the answers here. But you need to submit your guesses uh, to stand the chance of winning a Swarf and Chips goodie bag. That's it for today's uh, Swarf and Chips from DMG Mori at Mac 2018.